Our first speaker tonight is Stafford Scott. Stafford was involved in the Broadwater Farm Defence campaign and he's still uh, a campaigner against racism and against injustice today. So we're really pleased to have Stafford come, to come to our meeting tonight. So over to you, Stafford. Thanks. This is probably the first meeting where I've been asked to speak for 10 minutes and I haven't started off with the intention that 20 minutes in, the chair's going to have to stop me. And that's not because um, I don't think it's going to be a really interesting meeting. It's because I don't know much about what the undercovers did in my sphere of the world. Most of the um, justice campaigns that are um, part of the public inquiry, they come under Group J. And most of them only found out that they were spied upon when um, the Hearn inquiry or the Hearn team turned up at their solicitors to tell them that they had been some accusation made of their campaigns and their families being spied on. Most of the accusations actually came from Peter Francis. And they would turned up, and some of them, Francis hadn't made an accusation at all. But Hearn's team turned up at the solicitor's offices and started to say to people, well, actually, you weren't being spied on by the SDS. You were um, the victims of some inappropriate coverage. <laughs> and they kept some records they shouldn't, which is really interesting, because they've kept these records of inappropriate coverage that isn't spying, but they've managed to get rid of the records that do show that they were spying. So inappropriate coverage, and you're in fact a victim of collateral intrusion. I like following the police, I learn new language and new things every day. So we, we were being told, some of us, that we were the victims of collateral intrusions. We weren't the targets, and the real targets were the left-wing groups as if somehow that was justifiable. Peter Francis has told some of us what he knows about what went on in terms of our campaigns being covered. I was campaigning for Bulldog Farm in the 80s. And in the 80s, if you read the book Undercover, they'll tell you that the SDS was all over the top. They were having parties in Tottenham, they had flats in Tottenham, they were all over there. But you won't see any mention of Broadwater Farm. And any of you who know the story of Broadwater Farm will know that it would be totally impossible for us to believe that after the events of October the 6th, 1985, where the police got the biggest hiding of their lives, and an officer was killed in a brutal fashion, it's unbelievable to think that they wouldn't have tried to somehow infiltrate our defence campaign. We know that some things happened that had the impact and the intent of trying to split some of the community leaders from the families that were campaigning for their loved ones. We know that wherever we went, we would have a special branch spotter. His name was Paul G. So again, we think it's inconceivable, and he always seemed to know where we was going to be. So again, it's inconceivable that they didn't have people inside the defense campaign watching us as we were watching them. The problem for us is that without knowing the names of those undercover officers, it's impossible for us to be able to say what they did. They want us to believe, or they want to dismiss it and tell us that it was collateral intrusion, that we were just a byproduct of their other operations. But thanks to um, Helen Still, who, again, I knew from the 80s, who used to come to the Bulgore Farm defense campaign and support our campaign, who's part of the community of Tottenham. Thanks to Helen, we know at least one officer who, well, I don't want to talk about Helen's story, but at least one officer used to come to the Def Broadwater Farm Defence Campaign, and Helen was able to give me a photograph of this officer 
who we now know to be John Dines. And this is a photograph of the Bullwater Farm Defence Campaign picket outside Wormwood Scrubs. This is John Dines within 10 feet of Sharon Raggett, who's the wife of Engin Raggett. That bugger probably got there on our coach. Okay? So we know that they were all around. And what we need to know is who the rest of them were so that we can start to work out exactly what it was that they did. This character, John Dines, who was not apparently supposed to be spying on us, ended up living. His back garden was adjoining to the family of Winston Silco. So now we've got coppers who have framed a man, sent him to prison for 30 years, and when his family is trying to campaign for justice in his name, they're setting up in their back garden to listen and infiltrate and hear exactly what plans we have for trying <coughs> to show the world what had actually taken place. And we know that, because <laughs> he left soon after Winston was acquitted from the murder of P.C. Keith Blake. We wouldn't know these things if it wasn't for some of the activists like Helen, who was able to expose and un well, uncover and expose who John Dines was. And if it wasn't for Peter Francis, who I've had the opportunity to meet on a co couple of occasions, we would know very little. We need to know more. But what everyone here needs to remember, there wasn't going to be a public inquiry if it wasn't for um, Baroness Lawrence. Because of the allegations of the police spying on her, listening to telephone calls between her and her solicitors, spying on her family, listening to Dwayne Brooks, that's why Ellison was set up to um, carry out a review. And it's Ellison that says that we've got to have that public inquiry. So this public inquiry is going to create a special group for the Lawrence family. Some people are not happy about that. But I think we have to always bear in mind exactly why the public inquiry was granted. We saw this week one of those said officers who's involved in having their family campaign infiltrated, we saw him resign, head of terrorism. Big shot copper. Head of terrorism. We're off to Derry next week. And I hang out with the comrades on Bloody Sunday. And we want them involved in the public inquiry too. Because part of our learning is anything that they've tested in Northern Ireland, they pilot, and then they bring it over here. And we know that Wall was head of anti-terrorism. We also know that the architects of this, the true architects of this, <coughs> was actually John Greaves and our big ears, old Sir Kenneth Newman, and that they piloted these things in Northern Ireland and they brought them over here. When I heard that Walton was going to be allowed to resign, I wanted to call, reach out to Neville Lawrence and say to him, brother, you should tell them that if, Norton, if he's allowed to resign, that you will not go to the public inquiry. And there's some point where I, I think we're all going to join the campaign. We have to join the campaign against neither confirm or deny. I also think as activists, and it's an amazing grouping of activists from right across the spectrum, I also think as activists we have to consider whether or not there comes a point where we say to the inquiry, if you don't give us those names, we're not going to participate because it doesn't make no sense. It's akin to a boxer getting into the ring with both hands strapped behind their back and the blindfold round their faces. So we're trying to bring together justice campaigns and get them to make the demand of this public inquiry so that the public inquiry does offer us something before we go into the rift. We're also going to be having a conference. We had one in January. We'll be having another one in <coughs> April at South Bank University where we're going to bring together all of the groups that have been spied on. We're going to bring in some academics and we're going to bring in some of the best legal minds that we can have <coughs> to have a real debate on how can you hold the police to account, especially undercover policing, and especially when they decide to do this undercover political policing.
So hopefully you've all come along to that. I don't know what else to say, because as I said at the beginning, we don't know enough. But I'm sure there will be a time when we will know. And there will be a time when we'll be able to come and tell you that we knew what was going on then. And now the police have finally been exposed <coughs> for what they are. Thank you.